These pieces are cast in a plastic resin. The body is cast upside down, so there's a sprue that comes off of each foot. Bubbles tend to rise, so there can be some bubbles that accumulate in the bottom of the feet. I've filled some of those in here, and this still needs to be sanded flat. A few holes around here. And there's mold mark down the length of the body on both sides and on the inside of the legs. There may be occasional little bump or whatever in the body, but I think those will fill up with paint. The detail around here may get a few little spots of bubbles in it and they can be filled in. This arm is cast in through the hand. That cleans up nicely. You drill it out here for the baton. Mold mark down both sides of the arm. That cleans up pretty easy. The hand, same thing. Sprue will be cut off of here. You clean that up. And the head has a sprue right off the top of the head. Clean that off. And the bottom of the neck, you sand that up and chew it up so that it'll turn on here. This is the first casting I've played with cleaning up. It's pretty easy to take a number 11 X-Acto blade, drag it across those mold marks, small jeweler's file, and a little sandpaper. This plastic resin is quite easy to work with. Any small holes or anything, you fill it in with a little putty. There may be a few little microscopic pinholes here and there, but I think that'll fill up with paint. It's not going to be anything you'll be able to see. A few little bubbles around the ruffle area up here filled in quite easy. And I filled the holes in in the feet. Made sure it sanded those off flat. Make sure that they were flat and in the same plane. I drilled and tapped these for a 440 screw. And that'll be how that's mounted on the platform. That screw goes all the way up, up in there. These are 5 eighths of an inch long. I see this as being the most critical area. You want him to stand straight. You want him to be firm. So I sand this back and forth on a piece of sandpaper and true that up. This plastic has pretty good tensile strength, compressive strength, and that will be quite strong. You drill a hole down through here. I started off with a 560 force wire and I have since gone to a uh, 330 seconds. But that's drilled down into here, so the wire passes down into the bottom of the box and a hole is drilled across here. Now one wire will come in to one arm and one will go to the other and then there will be a bell crank on the head. The sprue was cut off the head and I just nibbled away at that with a number 11 X-Acto blade until I had about the same texture as what the hair is. Sanded off the bottom of the neck and made sure that that turns nice and square. The arms were sanded. It was quite easy to uh, cut off that sprue and get the detail back into the closed fist. And I drilled a hole in here for the baton. The other hand, same thing, cleaned it up. And when you mount this on here, you want to make sure that the, the plane of the shoulder and that is even. That will only be moving about that much. And on this side, the same thing. You want that plane to be about like that. This will only be moving about like that. Yeah. And the head, 
It's only going to move about that much. When this is standing up from here to the top of the head is seven and three quarters inches. I've spent quite a bit of time investigating how I could make one of these and make it reproducible so other people could use it. I'm not a sculptor. I'm not a wood carver. I investigated getting a 3D file made for a CNC router and that did not look promising at all, especially for this fine detail. And I looked into having a 3D file made for a 3D printer. That was outrageously expensive and after you threw a pile of money at it, nobody would guarantee you that it would actually work. And a lot of people involved in making these things told me that the plastic was relatively brittle. If you dropped it, it would probably shatter. I talked to this young lady about making this sculpture for me, and I'd seen her work, and she's a very good artist. And these are absolutely the first castings for this, and the quality is, I think, outstanding. The detail that she's put into this guy and into the head and the facial features, they're just like the sketch that comes with the John Smith Senior 20 plans. And I think it's the same sculpture that's included with his other organs. This guy stands seven and three quarter inches tall from the bottom of his feet to the top of his head, which is the same as the plans. This is a real easy way to get a conductor on the front of your organ. If you're interested in these, they will be available to you. There's quite a bit of expense involved in getting this made and the equipment to reproduce these. But considering the alternatives, I believe this will be priced very attractively. If you are interested, there will be contact information in the description for this video and send me a private message. You can send me a private message by going to my channel page, click on About, and Send Message.